name is Fard Qhill, F A H D Q U H I W L, consultant ophthalmologist in Sheffield. You've done a great deal of research. You've been looking into this this problem of, of lasers. From the research that you've done in places like Yorkshire, how big an issue is this? Well, in 2013, we'd identified seven cases just in one unit that's in Sheffield of children with life-changing, sight-threatening retinal injuries resulting from the misuse of handheld laser devices. These are high-powered handheld laser devices that were bought over the internet or abroad outside the European Union. Um, and because of the misuse of these laser pointers, they injured the retina, uh, causing damage to their sight that's irreparable. And essentially it was life-changing because it affected the, the ability of these children to recognize faces, to read, and even to drive in the future. And I wanted to pick you up on, on, on that, the, the damage done. In, in layman's terms, how does this affect, you know, if, you're, if one of these lasers is pointed at you and they're you know, way too high powered, what can the impact be? How damaging can they be to your eyesight? Unfortunately, the outputs are so powerful that even blinking in time isn't enough to limit the exposure and the damage that these lasers can do. And unfortunately, the retina isn't equally sensitive. Actually, all our good quality vision, which we use to read, to recognize faces, to drive, is concentrated in an area of one-tenth one of a millimeter. So if that is damaged, that is life-changing and it's permanent, it's irreparable, and can impact on your future and your child's future. Is your, is your feeling that these lasers are, are, are so common now that this is a problem that's, that's, that's only going to get worse? Is this why it's brought you out to, to Brussels to raise this as an issue? Absolutely. A anecdotally, we'd approached a small cohort of similar eye doctors like myself, uh, some dealing with retina problems and some dealing with children eye problems. And we've identified an additional 37 cases just in the last three years. If you look at the worldwide literature, we've identified another 26 to 27 cases in the worldwide. And as you know, with publications, they often lag the reality. Um, and also, they only touch the tip of the iceberg. And if one city, one small city like Sheffield, can identify seven cases within a year, I'm sure that there's an epidemic of this across the UK and across Europe. You're raising this with the European Commission. What do you want the EU to do? How could the EU help? Well, basically, I want the EU Commission to help me prevent further needless injuries uh, that are life-changing uh, and affect these children's future. And I want their help in how we can control the supply, but also, more importantly, to educate the public uh, so they don't inappropriately use these laser pointers if they've bought them. Now, I understand there are existing laws to do with laser pointers uh, from a European level which are meant to set down the, the, the limits. Something's clearly going wrong, something's not working. Is that going to be your message to officials here in Brussels? Uh, correct. I, I want to say to them that although the regulation is very clear about what is an appropriate a laser output for a laser device that can be used by consumers, it's how do we actually enforce that? How do we make sure that laser pointers in the marketplace uh, are safe for public use? And, and turning back to the patients that you see, it must be very distressing for the patients themselves and their, their families. Um, often these are, these are accidents, I understand. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons why I'm on this kind of mission. It's one thing to have to break bad news to a parent of a child that they've lost vision due to disease or because of a birth abnormality or a defect. It's another thing when it's because they bought something as a present, as a stocking filler, an innocent toy, uh, but actually uh, it ended up causing a permanent life-changing uh, injury to their retina and to their eyesight. And the timing of, of you raising this, it, we're into November, Christmas not far ahead. Uh, are the, you mentioned that they're sometimes seen as toys. Is that one of the problems, that this kind of perception of, of, of these lasers, that they're, that, that they're a serious device? They shouldn't be treated as a toy, perhaps. If you go on any online marketplace and you put in the search term laser toy, you'll see these laser pointers in amongst them. Uh, we're coming up to Christmas, you know, we're all looking for presents and stocking fillers for our children. Um, they're very pretty uh, lights, very powerful bright lights. Uh, you can think it's an innocent uh, 
a, a nice toy to give your child, uh, but actually these are very powerful lasers with outputs anything between 40 to 80 times more powerful than, uh, than, laser, uh, than powers deemed safe for the public. Um, so what I advise any parent is if they do want to buy a toy for their child as a laser device to ensure that it's bought from a reputable uh, dealer and that it's CE or kite marked.